Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's get all this audio set up here so you all can hear me. Hear what's going on with this game. So, let's talk a little bit today before we hop into the game on the importance of spending time having fun. So, um, this is the newest book that I came out with. It's called Keys to Prolific Creativity. It's all about managing the creative process, something that you do every day to Meet your goals to produce the work that you want to produce, whether it's a book or it's a comic book or an album, um, whatever you're trying to do creatively. This is about establishing a process. And one of the things I talk about in here, um, one of the keys is actually consume art. And I use the, the term art pretty broadly to just mean things that are like movies, books, and in, I include games in that. Very often we get presented with this message that we're wasting our time by doing things that are fun. And that we need to be working all the time in order to, you know, be great or something like that. And that's not a realistic view and it's really not a healthy view. And there's a couple reasons for that. So the first one is that uh, most of the people that you could think of who are great or who are great at things did not lack for leisure or pleasure in their lives. They had lots of things that they enjoyed doing. And they did those things. So if you think of someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger was super intense. He's very much a self-made man. Um, you know, he was a bodybuilding champion. But you watch a movie like Pumping Iron, and you do get the idea that he spent a lot of time having fun with his friends. You know, goofing off. You know, they drank. They didn't. Uh, they didn't live some kind of monk-like lifestyle where there was no fun involved. So the the like modern bodybuilding monk is kind of a. It's not a thing that you should really try to be. Uh, reality is that you got to spend some time having fun and you ought to spend some time having fun. The other thing is if you view fun, if you view leisure activities as bad, so if you, if you think that um, it's bad to have fun, then one of the things that you end up doing is you start trying to, you start trying to Put the things which are fun into a pedestal. Like I don't deserve to have fun. Um, you know, maybe if after accomplish all my work, I could I could finally play a game. Uh, maybe you start to think of it as like a reward or something like that. You get overly fixated on the things which are enjoyable in your life. Now the other side to that. So that means I think it's good to consume art every day, and I do it mostly in transition. So. If I finish with a workout, I'll listen to an audiobook while I do some chores. Then I'll I'll write for a while, or I'll work I'll work on my current book. And then I will usually play some games before I go to sleep, pretty late at night. And that tends to work out for me. I like to to have the fun as the transition away from work, and um, that that works for me. So you could do the something similar or do it your own way. It doesn't really matter. Now, when things get out of hand, and I talk about this in the book. Hobbies are a little bit different than things which you do for leisure. Hobbies tend to be things like playing Warhammer, collecting Warhammer collectibles, painting them, playing the game, or you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons. Hobbies are okay. I recommend if you want to be really making a lot of waves in your creative endeavors, you should limit your hobbies to like one. So if your hobby is World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft is definitely a hobby. It takes time like a hobby. That should be your only hobby. If you're really into to Dungeons and Dragons, that should be your only hobby. You shouldn't be doing Warhammer and D&D and World of Warcraft. You're not going to have any time to do anything else. Uh, all those things are going to suck up your time and they're going to start to feel like work too that uh, you need your own <laughs> escape from. So hobbies are a little bit different. It's okay to, to play golf on Sunday if that's what you want to do, but you shouldn't be playing golf on Sunday and then trap shooting on Saturday and then scuba diving on Friday, you know, like doing a different hobby every day of the week. That's, it's just going to eat up all your time um, that you should be spending doing other things, which matter to you, like hopefully doing creative work, which should matter to you. That's, uh, that's really what I'm getting in here when I talk about consume art is you should have time in your day to do things which are fun in and of themselves for maybe, maybe for the, for you, that's watching TV. And maybe that's reading books or watching a movie or something like that. It doesn't really matter. It's the things that you enjoy to do, the things which also inspire you to do a lot of work. For me, it's mostly books and games. I don't watch TV. I don't like TV series very much, really at all. And I like movies, but only 
every so often, you know, uh, less than once a week at this point. And that's mostly because a lot of newer movies just don't interest me. Um, I've gone into details on why that is um, over and over again, but most of the time the, the movie format is not what I'm super interested in. I enjoy playing games and enjoy reading books. Uh, the story's deeper with books, and of course games are just fun, right? And if games let you explore environments in different ways. Um, yeah, Warhammer alone is probably really pricey enough to rule out a lot of other stuff. Yeah, if you're in Magic the Gathering and Warhammer, you're going to be broke and have no time. So pick one. Um, one of the reasons I stopped doing Magic the Gathering, and I did this video on the Magic Game Night box set, I stopped doing Magic because... It just took up a bunch of headspace, time, and money. You know, you, you had to spend so much money to try to keep up with the game. I just didn't see the point of it anymore. I saw it as like an, an infinite money money grubber from my wallet. And regardless of how fun the game was, it just wasn't worth the money to me. Um, that's just that's how it came down to But if you But if you're playing Magic with like Game Night with fixed decks that never change, then it's really not that big a deal you can enjoy it for what it is so anyway let's go ahead let's hop into some games and let's let's play some oblivion which is what we've been playing on this channel for a while and um that's what we'll do we i still haven't done the main quest so i may start the main quest here just to get some oblivion gates popping up to give like another another gameplay element like clearing out the oblivion gates i don't know if i've ever actually cleared out all of the gates but they they tend to be pretty samey so once you've done like one or two, they, they're all pretty much the same, the same little gameplay cycle and uh, they're not that interesting to do. So if you don't want to do the main quest, you can just avoid it and the Oblivion Gates will never open up and you just never have to interact with that side of the game at all, um, which is kind of nice. It's a little bit annoying when you like try to go somewhere and there's an Oblivion Gate with like Daedra outside of it. You're like, I guess I got to go clear out this Oblivion Gate right now. Um, so anyway, let's go ahead and hop into that. Here we go, and we'll play this. I found out that you can actually play this with like VR mods. There's that beautiful music, which I love so much. You can actually play this with VR mods. That might be a fun thing to try out. Uh, I got my old phone working as a VR headset on my PC, which is, uh, I don't know what that is. It's interesting. Like it's an interesting thing to do. It's like use your phone as a VR headset. Um, I don't know VR. I still am hesitant as to whether VR would would actually be the future. I know that that was like that was the belief eight years ago, and I don't. <laughs> we haven't we haven't gotten there yet. You know we haven't gotten there yet. Oh yeah, I was gonna train some blacksmithing, but I thought it was here. Maybe I'm thinking of a different town where, where I could, you could just run in and train with the blacksmith. It might be Coral. Yeah, it might be coral. We'll find out. <laughs> Fast travel over to coral. I think it's actually coral. And then I think I need to go to Bruma to kill a guy. You know what? I think it's coral. Now to find Joffrey at Wayne and Priory. Oh no! Main quest! No! Is there a blacksmith over here? Yeah, I think she'll train me. An armorer. And this is one where you get Fingers of the Mountain. You do Fingers of the Mountain quest. Hello, I'm Rashida, the smith. She looks and different with this mod. Is fire and steel. VR will be the future in the future. What can I do for you? Yes, Knowledge training. is the key to success. Pay attention. I'm willing to teach. Your apprentice armor. Your repair hammers now last twice as long. You cannot repair magical items yet. Oh! Good that you want to get back. To get up to 50 armor. There we go. Only quality goods for sale here. And what can I, what can I interest you in? sell this person? Yarn. Give away yarn. You still get um. You still get a mercantile skill up if you give away yarn. So you can actually just... You, like grab a bunch of worthless crap and give it to a merchant and like skill it up that way <laughs> which is a little oh funny God. but you could do it that seems a fit. all right anything that's here yeah we'll give away Let's haggle this person 
Here. Let's, Thank you. I want to get a little bit more money for Go this ahead. stuff. <laughs> do our little... So what you do is you do the speechcraft game first. Then you, you cast charm on the person. And um, that's how you get it maxed up without having to spend any money. You don't want to like... You know, you don't want to... Uh, Please, you don't want to be bribing people That's all the time. You're not going to have any gold. I find the reaction so stupid in this little game. All right. Then, let's find uh, Captivate. Do I have like a alluring gaze? Take care. Good day. You can see her disposition is now pretty high. Have we can haggle this on up to about there. And I can sell. You need to make a oh, see, then she likes me less because I'm haggling too much. There we go. And uh, I have a steel bow and get rid of a rusty iron bow. You drive a hard bargain. There we go. I don't think she takes anything else, so that's fine. Oh, she does take soul gems for some reason. That's weird. All right. Thank that's you. A little weird. Come again. Kane says he rarely watches TV. Recently got into The Walking oh. Dead. I the Walking Dead. I think the I think I watched the first season and I, I liked it, but after that it just gets worse and worse. So I wouldn't recommend it. And it just it's a soap opera. It just goes on and on the way most soap operas do. Hi there. I'm Bitnell, the Curse Bringer, Captain of the Coral Guard. What can I do? For He's a weird looking dude. Good day. I'm here, so might as well try the Mage's Guild quest. You're a bold little thing, aren't you? I'm afraid you're of no use to me. Goodbye. All right. Be that way. What is it? Isn't there like a bag of gold in here somewhere? Or maybe that only spawns later. Solomon Kane's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, wait, this is the Fighters Guild. Greetings. Huh? Join the Fighters the Guild. Fighters Guild is always looking for new members. Are you interested in joining? I am. Yes, sign me up. Excellent. You are now an associate in the Fighters Guild. You should report to either Azan in Anvil or Burr's Grow Cash in Shadenhall for contracts. Yeah, the Cole and all the other ones have the same fiery burning because they are... Uh, they're all heroic. They're intended to be heroic. Robert E. Howard really, really liked to to have that. So, you can join. I guess you could join the Fighters Guild and get like a Dwarven Axe right there. Once you become Guild Master, you can, um, you get like a, a chest up here full of stuff that people have found. Now the glass sword might really. I don't know if I if it's stealing if I take the glass sword. Let's find out. Well, let's find out. Oh, messed that one up. It's like the lockpicking lawyer here. You guys ever watch the lockpicking lawyer channel? Where he's like, picks locks in like two seconds. And you're like, wow. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's see if we can get that glass sword out of there. Some people just like to buy picks and auto attempt. They don't like to do the little mini game, which is fine. It's up to you what you want to do. You know. Oh, that should have done that one. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Now, 
Now, I do like the way they did lock picking on the Switch version of Skyrim. Like, you can feel the lock picks, like, hit the pins. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool way they did it. Now, is it stealing? Glass longsword replica. It does one damage. They knew that I would come in here to steal this. And it's worth nothing. Wow. I forgot that it was a replica. I'm like, come on, give me a good weapon. All right, let's go over to the, what the heck is going on here? That was a fun error. Stuck in the wall. Let's do the Mage's Guild here. I need to get to that Mage's College so I can make my own spells finally. What is it, Associate? Do you need something? I need a recommendation. I'm afraid I can't just write one out of hand. That would be against protocols, you see. If perhaps you can clear up a small matter involving Irana, you can prove your loyalty to the guild and earn... Frank Durabont got fired from The Walking Dead in the middle of Season 2, which explains the dip in quality in that season. I wasn't, I haven't kept up with it, so I don't know, but that makes a lot of sense. And this is what they do. They, they, the people that they get rid of is always the writers because you don't see the writers. You notice if actors leave, but you don't notice if writers leave. At least the regular people don't. So that's what they do is they, um, they, they get rid of the writers and replace them with other guys that they're like, whatever. They look like writers. And then the quality declines because you replace them with. People that don't have the same vision, or just people who aren't as good, or for less money. People who are less experienced. Do you have much interest in the 2000 AD comics? I recently read Maze World by Alan Grant and Arthur Ranson. Very good stuff. I will probably check out Button Man next. I don't know anything about them. I don't read a lot of comics. Um... Yeah, I don't read a ton of comics, so I don't know. But we could open this. You know, you can get you can get some soul gems. There's a lot of soul gems at the the Mages College if you want to be using that. See, look at all these soul gems. A pleasure to make. No, this guy doesn't have it. Well met. I don't know all the details, but I heard that she complained to the council until they removed Tikis from his position. At the Arcane University. Have a look at my wares. I'm sure. Okay, good. This guy has some conjuration stuff. Yes. This is what we want. Okay. Let me uh For you, of course. Let me uh, work this guy up here. Goodbye. Good day. I can Have haggle. a look at my wares. Dominate creature. Let's see here. Dismiss undead. That's interesting. Bound bow. That's a good one. This is gonna like clear out my bank here. Don't have enough magicka. So I could summon a Dramora. But I can't summon these like cool Daedra here. Summon Faded Wraith. Flame Atronarch. That sounds like a cool one. Frost. Headless zombie. Skeleton guardian or skeleton hero. Skeleton champion. Spider Daedra. That's a cool one. Um, let's get the Dramora and the get like rebuke undead that's a good one um a skeleton guardian he's he's like a bow he'll shoot he'll shoot arrows that's pretty cool flame matronarch is pretty cool um headless zombie let's, let's get that one i don't want to spend all my gold in my place though We'll come back for more, for more goodness. Good and then I could finally replace my, 
this is seven seven are they on the south yeah um let's see what do i have there i have a i have an imp right now or i have a scamp we're going to replace that scamp with uh Dremora. so there he is what's up dude you're looking cool you're tall let's go buddy I think The Walking Dead just keeps going. It's like The Simpsons of of zombie shows or something now. No one knows why it's still going on. Where's Irana? Where is she? I think she's at the end at this point. Haven't you seen her around town? She's either at the Grey Mare. Alright, we'll go to the Grey Mare. Let's see if we can't. All right. Netflix shows tend to dip in quality. All shows do. This is like one of the points I make. It's really rare for a show to not dip in quality because the writers move on. That's the first thing that gets replaced to writers. And uh, if, if the story's not working, then not much else is going to work either. It's really rare that you have writers stick around. It's kind of why South Park is prob has been hasn't had as much of a dip of quality as that it's still Trey and Matt doing it. <laughs> yeah, if it's a replica, why do they have it locked? So, what say you? Yes, I'm interested. Excellent. It's a simple task, really. All you need to do is fetch a book for me. The book is entitled Fingers of the Mountain. It is of no use to you. You won't be able to read it. I, however, can and would very much like to. You'll find it in an old ruin called Cloud Top. It's north of Coral, up in the mountains. I'm afraid I don't have an exact location. Return it to me immediately when you have it. Make no mention of it to Tikius or anyone else. I don't remember if I need to talk to Tikius first here. Make it well worth your effort. All right. I think it tells me. I need to tell Tikius about this immediately. I kind of just want to go get it and not tell Tikius. I don't remember if you can just do it without getting TKS. Like even Star Trek The Next Generation had a had a quality dip. And had like some really just not very good episodes towards season like six and seven. Deep Space Nine had the opposite. Deep Space Nine started a little weak. It was still good, but it didn't really get good until later in the show. They did the opposite. It's a show that got better as it went. Sopranos, I mean, the Sopranos really kind of set the stage for, like, soap operas that still appeal to males. Oh. Um, Sopranos had just a bunch of seasons, and it just kept getting worse. And it, the stories went nowhere, and nothing happened. I remember watching it years ago, and that's about the time when I realized that, like, I guess the jig was up. For uh, some of those TV series, they just weren't that good. So I like them if they if they're completely episodic, like old Star Trek. It's just better that way. There's so much less that goes wrong. If you have a bad episode, it doesn't kill the show. What? Not only does it insist, but she knows where it is. Okay, so what you do here is you give her the book and she gives you a spell called Finger of the Mountain. And then you go steal the book back and it's all good. Are we clear? Ignore her request. Go to this place she has described and return with the book. This is far more important than any petty squabble. 
So. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go up there and get it. Hopefully I don't turn into a vampire and get owned by the sun on the way. What time is it? It might happen. It's the dangers of being a vampire. You know, if you start the main quest, you actually get a horse. And the horse makes it a little bit easier, I think, to do some of this stuff. Pick some flowers on the way, guys. Picking flowers, picking flowers, making potions, picking flowers. And if you're a punch wizard, you can get a unicorn mount pretty easily. Who's this guy? Go ahead. He's just a dumpy looking constable. There's a deer. Look at the deer. I'm faster than a deer. Yeah, I can't even watching imagine watching these show. The new show not only is it not really Star Trek, it's not even Captain Picard. It's an android that they replaced him with. And that's like their big reveal. And uh, like transhumanist garbage that actually never would have flown in the older shows. In fact, they had they had whole shows dedicated against like the transhumanist agenda. Um where in Deep Space 9, the doctor refused to replace a guy's brain with computer parts because it would make him lose his humanity it's like nah we just replaced we replaced John Luke Picard with an android who ages it's like it's stupid it's not even so it's not him you know and that's the whole point it's like well it could be him like you are just your 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 memories implanted into something it's like no you're more than that <laughs> this comes from an entirely materialistic perspective and plus it's not even original you know we dealt with that in, in, in like Blade Runner 40 years ago at this point like this this theme is 40 years old it's been done to death oh here actually do I have some soul trap magic I think I do yes I do There we go. Captured his soul. Your soul is mine. There's my phone reminding me that I need to record some videos today. I actually, now I see, I say that I actually am a cyborg in a very literal sense. I have a, I have a hearing aid implant. Um, yeah, the next generation was about life in general, finding different forms of life, not replacing us with androids or cybernetics. Yeah, it started to get to, to like, it's, it started to try to be new sci-fi instead of old sci-fi. Old sci-fi was about like the wonder of discovery and great stories. And they're like, we need to go really Campbell, you know, the Campbell type sci-fi. So if you deliver to Irana, she tells you you can actually get a spell by shut by by casting shock at this thing. I'm gonna try it now and see if see if it, I can just get it. Um, if not, I mean it may only unlock if you actually. Here we go. See this like charred remains. Oh. All right, doesn't seem to work unless you've actually triggered it to work. So. Oh well, let's look around a little bit before we head back. What's on? What's going on up here, guys? Something in there? I don't want to jump in somewhere that I can't get out of. Let's take a look at that. You can see coral down there. Not quite. I wonder if I can uh, actually turn the view distance up even more. 
And this stuff should all be higher. Some of the stuff is forced on through the through the panel. Mm, yeah, normally you can see out like all the way across the way I had it set up. I might, might not have turned it up enough. Anyway, let's head back to coral. We don't need to. Clovian horn. Let's go. What's what's Clovian horn and why is it on my map? I wonder if it's a mod I put in. I might have put in a mod that has this. Yeah, if someone took your memories and personality and dumped them into a computer, it wouldn't be you. But I mean, if you were, if it was possible to do that, that would, uh, you cannot go that way, turn back. That's funny. You know, that's, uh, that would, it comes from a perspective that there's no soul and that your soul is just your memories or something. You cannot go that way, turn back. Well, I'm here at <clears throat> Colovian Horn, Mount Colovia. I wonder if I, I, it says I can't go that way though. I wonder if that's a mod that I installed that I just never really did anything with. Here's a cool statue. We can look at this statue. With some graves. Some mushrooms just on the ground. Cool statue. I guess I'm going down to this part here. Yeah. There's a deer. Where am I? I don't know if I've ever been here before. Cannot go that way. Look, there's Skyrim. I just want to go to Skyrim real quick. I don't know what Soma is. I like cybernetic augmentation in series like Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, I mean they're always de dealing with that question of like what is what is humanity, and um, I like that. But it's been done a lot. You know, Star Trek doesn't really need to go down that path. Star Trek also it always came from a humanist perspective. Like secular humanism was its main religious philosophy, and so whoa. <laughs> the the imps over there and I can't get him. <laughs> it says I can't go that way. Turn back. Fine. I wonder if I can de-aggro him at all. Or if I have to like walk all the way back to Coral now. This is cool. Statue here, the guy Fal Falconer here. <laughs> kind of fun. All right, let's just let's go back. It's a walking simulator on PS4. They caught you trying to cross the border, right? Ran into that Imperial ambush. Oh yeah, that's that's where you get caught to go, then go to Skyrim. Where is she? Oh, she's over here talking to this guy again. I really like the warm lighting in this game. I just think it's quite pretty. I, here's the book. Yeah, the Gundam manga is pretty good. The Ghost in the Shell manga is really different from the movie. 
which you, you can expect with a lot of this kind of stuff. Where is Tikis? Well, can I? Is the book safe? Do you have it? What? Is it unacceptable? <laughs> At no time did I ever suggest that you should actually follow through and give her the book. It cannot be left in her hands. You will retrieve the book immediately. If you have any intention of ever receiving a recommendation from me. Here. Let's wait to about seven hours. Drink some blood. Go steal out back from what's her face. Get on, getting on. I think someone caught me drinking blood in here. Feed. Drink some blood. Your hunger has been satisfied for now. I'm, I'm at a level I could actually go get the unbreakable lockpick now. Wait, am I level 10? No, I'm only level 6. Never mind. I think you gotta be level 10. Alright. Head on over to the Grey Mare. I feel like virtually all Elder Scrolls games just look better at night. It's just better to see the, the lighting... Like the lighting looks way more atmospheric. You, it's brighter on your screen than on my screen, by the way. I always forget to mention that. Oh, this guy wants you to go help his sons fight goblins. Should I do it? We'll do it. Have you seen my sons? Yes. Rather than you get like a cool ice blade for it. You get a cool sword, so we'll do it. For the last few days, we've suffered attacks from these creatures at our farm, not far from Coral. Did his voice just change? Don't know where, but Rallus may know more by now. My boys will take up the fight, even if the guards won't. Doesn't matter if it's outside the town walls; it's still a of all. Not really. Affects you. Oh my gosh. Yes, I will help. Somehow, I knew you do the right thing. There's a, a great little quest you can do over in the eastern side of the map. Where it's like there's a war between two goblin tribes, and you can like pick which one you want to wipe out. And each each uh, each like goblin shaman carries a really valuable staff at the end that do different things, and it's pretty cool. Or you can kill them all. You can actually kill all of them, and and there's not really a lot of consequence to it. Now I think I could steal her her book right now. I think I can just steal it right now. Oh, there she is. Well, I expected you to be sleeping. You're standing by this orc. Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing there. Sorry to intrude. All right. Where's this uh, killing field? Out that way, okay. 
Maybe we can drop by Wayne and Priory if we really want to. I think most people miss it. You have to talk to someone out on the road. You just have to run into them, and then uh, they give you the Goblin War quest. But I think it's pretty fun. It's a cool quest. There's lots of lots of little quests like that in the game. Just little mini stories like this one, where it's like the goblins are attacking our town. It's like go fight them. We'll give you something cool. I think we get a frost blade for fighting them. Is what we get. Be over this way. Here we go. Here's the boys. I'm afraid I have no time for small talk, friend. I'm waiting for my father, Ballas O'Dill. Have you seen him in town by any chance? He's not coming with us. I think I understand, and it is better that he remains safe. But I wonder why he has asked. The files got corrupted? Oh no. You would join us. Though you have no personal stake in this fight? Hmm. An honorable deed. I gladly accept your help then. Maybe there should be like a backup. I actually I think Steam has a cloud cloud backup of safe games, which is pretty good. We can't keep stopping. <laughs> okay, okay. We will spill their blood in the name of our Shrouded armor is getting beat up here. Let's put on our Agronach raiment. And I actually want that bound bow. Where's that? Did I, did I buy bound bow? Maybe I didn't. Thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Oh well. Hmm. Maybe I didn't. Look at all this sweet. Look at all this 55 resist magic. Just look at all this stuff, man. I'm I'm awesome. All right. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Guess I didn't buy it. Never got around to playing Skyrim. Still having fun in Oblivion and Marwin when it came out. Oh, I didn't buy it. There we go. I'll buy it. I'll buy it later. Okay, where are we going, guys? Come on. It's getting spooky out here. Oh, I leveled up. Leveled up from giving us some light to see by. Oh, there's the farm. Skyrim Super Mega Special Edition will be out for PS5, so don't worry. You're right. I clicked cancel. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to play the Skyrim VR thing that they that they actually did. Uh, people were saying it's like it's actually really fun. <laughs> it's actually really hilariously and like it. You think it wouldn't work, but it actually works really well and uh, is fun to play. Might like get that with like a PSVR or something. 
I'm sure they have like a PS5 VR. Actually, I'm not sure. Look at all the carrots they have. No, stealing all their crops so the goblins can't get them. I'm gonna get over encumbered with, with, with carrots. Dramora go. Oh, my Dramora's going off there to, to kick their butts. There we go. Alright, so they got that goblin. Is there another wave of goblins? Ooh, a lockpick. Still a short sword. That might be good. Oh, more. Just chopping these guys up. Did one of the boys die yet? Sometimes they die. Oh, one of them died. Might as well loot his body. Now, I don't know if you get like all the quest rewards if one of them dies. The goblins have been defeated. I should inform him that Antis did not survive. Oh boy, that feels bad. I couldn't save this boy. Successfully harvest carrot. Couldn't save the boy. Steel shield. Long sword. It's not even worth picking some of these crappy weapons up. Except I forgot I can I can actually repair them, you know. So if they're if they're damaged at all, I can just repair them real quick for some skill ups. Just drop them on the ground. Poor guy. Couldn't save him. Oh that one was Alright. Couldn't save him. My shrouded hood is broken. I'm going to have to have, actually pay someone to fix it. Let's put uh, some of these weapons in here. Like that, like that. Don't need. Alright, that's probably good. I need the steel, the leather shield, and a steel shield. Alright. That's probably good. Is there anything else to repair? Get those repairs going. Poor Antis. Nah, you just get gold now that one's dead. It's pretty hard to save them both. I think you get a. I think you get that frost sword if you can save them both. Yeah. Dang it. You know, like a, a different me would reload to get the sword, but I know I'm just going to get better swords, so who cares? My armor level's like level 20, like level 30. I need to get up to 50. It's okay. We'll get it up there. Oh yeah, Grey Mare is where we're going. And then we can, uh, we can sleep a little bit, too, and gain a level. 
see where our points are going to go. Why are you wearing a dress? It's the it's the raiment of a mighty gladiator. Okay. Where is he? It's that way? Okay. I'll just be walking around. He just gives me gold, I guess. He might have the sword on him, though. That might be interesting. If I could just like kill him and get it real quick. If he was there, maybe his other son wouldn't have died. That's true. This is no time for talk. Oh, he's walking over there. It's like he walked past his son. Ravison and to need your help. Foul things. I I should have been with them. It should have been me. Absolutely. Oh, thank you for the five dollars, Philip. Thanks for the stream, David. The sword is called Children. Great for fighting ghosts with early on. Yeah, it's true. I think I have a silver uh, dagger in my inventory just for that, just in case. Hundred and fifty gold. Children. Yeah, I think he's carrying it though. Does he have it? No. Nah, he doesn't have it. Stop right there. Here's the procedure. We go to the castle. First we search you. Actually, I forgot. If they if they take your stuff, then you lose some of these quest items. So I actually have to have to reload this. Um Because it, it makes your quest items disappear. Well let's get the uh Get the goal from him at least. He really wasn't there with the son. I wouldn't I wouldn't send some stranger off to help my sons. I I certainly wouldn't. Rose. Yeah, children. It's really good early on. Like, it's really hard to get magic weapons early on. It's not that hard, but, um, you know, it's challenging to get magic weapons early on. Oh, yeah, we were going to steal back the book. So I think we talked to her and she gives you a page. Then you can go back to the to cloud top and shock it. And then you can get... Um, it's a little lightning spell. It's actually not that good, if I remember right, but whatever. It's a free spell. Hello, my little friend. I've committed most of the book to memory, but I took the time to write down a passage you might find useful. It contains instructions for acquiring a very special power. You'll want to read it carefully and then return to Cloud Top. I consider this to be more than a worthy reward for your help. I believe you'll agree. Assuming you're careful. Thanks for the five dollars, Zach. Turns out my last assignment for my BSN degree. Just wanted to share with people and gave Oh, just turn in your last assignment. Okay. Good good job. Goodbye. Congratulations. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good Saturday. Grab that book. Go back to Tikius and go get ourselves the finger of the mountain. Where was Cloud Top? Go up there real quick. And let's look at the instructions. My dear helper, most of the text you've given me is well beyond your comprehension. I'm afraid. I found one section, however, that has been appended by the keepers of the Imperial Watch, and their notes will be of use to you. Return to the ruins of Cloudtop. There you should find a section of pillar that looks remarkably unlike any other stonework present. The carvings on this pillar were made by the Aeliads, and the pillar has been infused with significant power. The following was scribbled in the margins of the book, presumably by the same men who took the pillar from its original resting place. The notes are smeared in places, so I've included what I could decipher. 
do note that this sounds rather dangerous and take whatever precautions you feel are necessary. Only seems to function outdoors where it reacts strongly to magic. Terrible power capable of striking a man dead on the spot. Transported to the stone to a secure location in order to study it more fully. Guild wizards brought me in to focus power of stone, several severely injured. Stone finally tuned to react to shock magic. Well can stone necessary to harness the stone's power. Success means powers of shock unattainable through other means. From these notes and the original Aelid inscriptions, it seems that our Imperial friends were attempting to harness some degree of the Aelid's magical power and were marginally successful. I suggest you pr procure a Welkin stone for yourself. Searching Alien ruins will be the most will likely be the quickest method of acquiring one, and return to Cloudtop to cast a shock spell at the pillar. What happens then, I think you can comprehend on your own. I think I have one. Oh, I sold my Welkin stones. Well might have to go get one I usually sell them but you can keep them and I think you can restore mana with them they're like mana pots so it's so whatever head back to coral and turn it in imperial females sound like grannies too yeah listen to them You don't have anything to say to me. <laughs> Give the book to Tikius and be on our way. Oh, well, we need to rest and level up. There we go. Yeah, I keep the Varla stones. The Varla stones you can use to like recharge a weapon. So they're pretty valuable. Because some of the higher level weapons are really expensive to recharge, and you you can't get any charge out of them with like even a grand soul stone. Where art thou, Tikius? Excuse me. You never know when you might need a farewell. Good day. Yeah, he's got the bound. Found bow. That's a good one. Oh, I'm running out of money. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go dive some dungeons just to get the money going. Go ahead. Fingers in the mountain. the book yet. Here's the book. Finally, I shall see to it that the book is kept safe until the council decides. What should be done with it? Yeah, but what if it was a stranger in gladiator regalia that's like, I can help you? I'd be like, yeah, maybe. Send a recommendation to the arcane university. All right. Okay. I heard a funny noise outside in the hall. My kids are doing something weird. All right, let's go to Bruma and kill this guy. And we can actually fence some loot, I think. Get some money. I saw Strat Edgy's video on Daggerfall recently. It looks like a lot of fun, but frustrating experience. Kind of reminds me of Betrayal at Crondor, but more open and chaotic due to procedural, yeah, random generation. Um, Daggerfall's okay. It's really not my favorite. It's really not my favorite game. Just the gameplay's not that great. It's kind of cool that it's always something different. Like whatever you're doing. But at the same time, it's also... I don't know. I think you can sell this guy anything and it counts. You know, as like selling something. So I'm not sure. Here, we'll sell that. To sell stolen goods though, to like trigger the, the quests. Let's see if I have anything else that's like stolen. 
I could sell the stolen bone meal, but you get more money out of making potions, so. I did forget to sleep, so let's let's go to the Mage's Guild and sleep. You can also break into Jagasta's house here and um, and steal his black hand robes like at level one if you want really insanely good robes at level one. Where's the Mage's Guild? It's gotta be down there. Acrobatic skill, you can jump on the roofs, guys. Get rid of acrobatics as a skill. And I think I think it's worse for it. Like what makes this game great, a lot of people miss what makes this game or really any game great. Any of these older games, why they're better. They're great not because of the micro of the gameplay, but because they it's like a sandbox. Like things are set up and they just leave it up to you to figure out what you want to do with it. Like do you want to jump on the roof to shoot arrows at the guy? Like the fact that you can break the game just means they give the player enough freedom to do it. A recommendation from me. Well of course. Ravenous would naturally want my opinion, wouldn't he? This is a situation we can both benefit from, Associate. She does sound like a granny. I agree. Send along a glowing recommendation. If you can find Jaskar, I'll write the recommendation immediately. Oh, exploits in Skyrim. There's the the main thing is that you can use the the game mechanics in Skyrim to like really break it if you know what you're doing. He's disappeared. Like you can make yourself immune to dragons like really easily. You can make the game super easy. You can in this one too. Like you can do hundred percent chameleon. You can do things like that. That basically, if you can, if you enchant gear with hundred percent chameleon, you can just kill anyone and they can't do anything against you. There's lots of things like that. I don't have a problem with them because it's part of the game. Like, you have to talk to these people and wake up Jaskar. Always keep your mat. What can I interest you in? He's got some cool stuff too. Open average lock. I don't have a high enough alteration skill, so skip that. Scar. You want to find your scar? All right. I think I can help with that. But you have to agree to do something for me first. And what have you to do? You can't tell Jean about it. All right. You want to find? All right. And that's the spirit. You help me pull off a little prank, and I'll help you find your scar. With all due respect to our wonderful leader, she couldn't cast her way out of a paper sack. It's insulting that we're here, working for her, when she knows nothing. She's managed to butter up the right people just enough to keep her position. The dissonance between her voice and what she looks like. It's because they use the same couple voice actors. Yeah, the difference between chameleon and invisibility. Chameleon reduces your visibility. If you have full chameleon, you're invisible, but an invisibility spell will make you visible as soon as you take an action. Um, chameleon doesn't work that way. So basically, they can never detect you. They know you're there, but they can't detect you. So you can just get infinite stealth attacks on them, stuff like that. And just uh, <coughs> punch them to death without them being able to know what's going on. Really? You're going to love this. I'll teach you a spell to unlock things. What you need to do is get into Jean's desk. I don't think you can cast invisibility on an item. Okay? Her room is upstairs. Make sure no one sees you. You do that for me, and I'll make sure you can find your scar. Just go unlock Jean's desk with that spell I told you. Find her menu, her room. What spell did I learn? I don't know if he if he teaches it to me because I might already know it. 
minor latch crack. Well, one of these is just better. The minor latch latch crack is just better. First, let's level up. You can actually find your scar down here. He's like in one of the beds. There he is. No. He's standing around here somewhere. This is a really good one to do like alchemy because you can just pick up the ingredients and do a bunch of alchemy here. Which I might do after I've rested. All right, we'll just rest for a little bit. We'll rest for eight hours. Chameleon's How to Break the Game. Didn't Todd Har Howard voice a guard or something? I don't remember. Todd Howard should have voiced a shady traitor in this game. Would have been very fitting. Endurance, speed, and... It's the other plus three that we want. Int or agility? Probably int. Get a little bit bigger magicka pool. There's two Sheagorath voices. This is interesting. There's an original one, and then they replaced it when they came out with Shivering Isles. They replaced, um, they replaced the voice both at the statue and in the Shivering Isles. Or um, when they came out with Shivering Isles, they had a different guy doing the voice, so it, it ended up getting replaced. Kind of interesting. I like the original one better. The the one they replaced it with is a guy trying to do a Scottish accent, and it's not that good. And then the one that uh, they actually did. Oh, she's asleep, so we get to sneak here. Manual spellcraft. It's not even stealing though. Oh, she woke up. Okay. It's like everything else is just like free, free grabs. Um, but one of the things I can do is just scoop up all of the. How much? How much space do I have in my bags? Not that much. You can scoop up all of these things and sell them, and they'll, you can make a ton of money that way. And I'm probably going to do that in a minute. So that's stealing, apparently. Oh. place to loot stuff. Of course you can take all the food and my name is Selena Aranya. Alright. I suppose I like her well enough. It's the same voice as Jean. <laughs> I don't quite think she deserves the hard time the others give her. Look I like you more, but I really don't want to get in the middle of this. She likes me. She if just met me. If Lara and Scar want to have their fun, fine. I'm not going to participate, and I'm not saying another word about it. Take it up. Take care. Alright. You just take all these things and you can sell them. Make a bunch of potions. Oh, I'm over encumbered. I have to make some potions to. Uh... Oh, I have an apprentice calcinator now. Sweet. <laughs> it's going to be that much better. Apple and. Blackberry.
shield. She Ooh, that's kind of cool. Or meat. And venison. Resist poison. Bone meal. I don't have anything that mixes with that right now. Uh, nope. There's something in here that's heavy, though. For sure, right? Tomatoes. Rice. All right. No, we're still we're still overweight. We're gonna have to drop something. Gotta have something in here that's just like not worth anything that weighs a bunch. Oh, I don't know. We'll drop one of those. Shatters like glass. Have you pulled? Just the prank. You too. Have you pulled? Yes, I did. With all due. Maybe he's not gonna. Take care. Go away. You'll ruin everything. There he goes, I hit him. Go away. He might only talk to me at a certain time yet, you know? Take your time. Let's wait around for a little bit. <laughs> Get a little bit more vampiric here. First Skyrim's take on alchemy it doesn't make sense to carry the stuff with you and do it on the fly. I agree, actually. Yeah, the alchemy table makes a little bit more sense to me, I think, than um, Have you pulled same thing with enchanting, you know. But I do miss uh, you got do miss being able to make your own spells. Right, I'll just take that from you. Meet me in the living quarters just after ten p.m. All right. So he was standing down there to make. Hmm. See all these alchemy ingredients. And I did like in Skyrim you could like store your alchemy ingredients. Oh, I'm over encumbered again. How did that happen? I picked up everything. I'll, I'm stealing everything in the world. That's how that happened. Something has to, has to get dropped. A feather potion that weighs a pound. That's always two pounds for that restore health potion. Wow. Heavy. Let's do 11 hours. Played the original Monkey Island and one of the newer ones. I don't think I ever played too. I like Monkey I, I like those. The same thing, there was one called Day the Tentacle that I thought was really fun. A warm, gentle breeze causes a tickle on your face, but as you go to brush it off, you find you cannot move your arms. Looking at your skin, you realize that it has turned to a brittle green glass. Standing perfectly still, you breathe in shallow gulps of air, knowing that moving would cause your skin to shatter into thousands of pieces. The tickle on your face worsens, and you know that you are about to sneeze. As your skin shatters, you wake up sweating. Ready to find Jaskar? Just watch, you'll see. If I'm a vampire, I can carry more stuff. There he is. Oh, there. I hear you've been looking for me. Oh, 
please don't be mad. All the um, all the Khajiit and all the Argonians are the same voices. <laughs> Finding ways to confuse her. All right. We'll go up there and say that we found Jaskar. Where is she? Is this her? No, that's Selena. Oh, this is like a little storeroom. Where is she? She must be upstairs. In her bedroom, which I walked into while she was sleeping and stole things from, from it. And she got up and was like, okay, I'm glad you're here. Any luck finding just call? Yes. Found him, did you? Well, I suppose that's good. You'll have to forgive me. I seem to have misplaced something. Hmm. Yes, well, let's never mind that. You fulfilled your end of the bargain, though, so I'll fulfill mine. Romanus will have my recommendation. And don't you forget about me once you've finished your training. I'm sure we can help each other out. <laughs> All right. Got our recommendation from Bruma. Now we need to kill that dude. Let's go sell some stuff and then we'll kill the dude for our Dark Brotherhood quest. Let's kill some more stuff and sell it. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting about this game is that there's not like a limited pool of gold per merchant. So like you can just continually sell as long as any item is below their maximum. So you can generate a ton more gold in... Uh... I'm Olga. Hunt, hunt. Okay, gotcha. You live with your boyfriend. I'm really tired. Well, he's not going to fence with me unless he, he's sitting down, I guess. Let's wait, I don't know, 16 hours. Just wanted to shoot you some big ups. Love your content. Love your writing tips. are great. Thank you. I'm going to have more coming. I think I'm going to talk a little bit today about Last of Us 2. I think I'm going to make some content specifically about that. If you want the gist of that, it's basically that, you know, when you have a, a, a game that is says it's going to be all about story the story better be damn good and uh good stories usually include stories that don't <laughs> don't involve like hating on the people who buy the game why doesn't he okay is he gonna come in and sit down so i can fence with this guy Oh, great. Oh, I'm getting owned by the sun. Where's Ongar? Wait here another like three hours. Let's see if he comes and sits down. There he is. There we go. Now he'll finally trade with me. <clears throat> now they'll buy anything that's below his maximum, which is 600 gold. So, just sell whatever. Sell um, two of those. So we keep one. Sell four of those. Actually, I should haggle this up. Make more money. I'm really... All right. I'm listening. Happy, angry. 
Is that what we said? You're a molding. Well, uh, uh, what a wonderful compliment. I wish I could say that. Ugh, that's goodness. What can I say? And where is it? Alluring gaze. I think I have an even stronger one. It's like vampire seduction. I'm really tired. Make him like me. Yeah, my favorite customer. Disposition 92. We can definitely pump that up a bit. Let's see what we can sell him. Pearl. You've made a good bit of gold. Let me get it even better. Find out. I can't make that deal. Ah. I can't make that deal. There we go. Waters of Oblivion. I think I can move this oh, I need to learn that. I, think I need to learn that. Anything else? Make sure I learn those before I sell them. Let's see, he buys anything, so. Rid of that. Rid of that. Strong potion of healing. Restore health. Restore fatigue. Restore fatigue. I think I can move this item for you. <laughs> Store endurance. I think I can move. No need those. Because we're a vampire, we can just turn on Night Eye whenever we want. Same thing with this. Potion of fire shield seems like it'd be useful. I don't need this. I think I can move. Uh, I don't need the poison. I don't need that either. I think I can move this item for All right, we're just selling. I'm just selling like a bunch uh, of stuff that I probably don't need. Sell the bone meal. Get a little bit of gold towards that gold knife. Give away knife. Yes. You could sell individual arrows in order to, you know, in order to get uh, get some skill ups. If you're wanting to get skill ups, oh, sell five of those, three of those. There we go. Two thousand gold, just like that. Just like that. Your competent man video contains a viewpoint that I've held for years that static characters aren't inherently inferior and character arcs aren't always necessary. Yeah, I mean, it's it's only kind of recently that people have this view that, um, you know, we, we should always have characters grow all the time. Um, they should be constantly getting, constantly getting better. Hmm. Oh wait, here we go. Okay. Just go to the city of Brooming, find Bailey's house and gain entrance. Once inside, I should stage a tragic accident. I think I have to wait around till eight. So I might do that. One hour, we break in the basement, we sneak up to the top. And look, the sun's down and it's snowing, so we're not getting owned by the sun. Here we go. There we 
we go. Down we go into the depths. I have entered Bainland's house. If I can access the second floor crawl space and loosen the fastenings on the mounted head, between 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. it will fall on Bainland as he rests in his chair. If Bainland dies any other way or if Grom is killed, I will lose my bonus. I don't think any of this is stealing, by the way, for some reason. Interesting. Those pumpkins. Turn the pumpkins into pumpkin potion. I'm clearing out his larder before we kill him. He won't need he won't need all this food where he's going. He's gonna go sit at the feet of Sithis. He won't need any of this food, so we're gonna take it and make potions out of it. Look at all this free corn. Well, nothing in there. Lots of wine. We don't really need the wine. Though I think you can chug the wine as a potion. It does some stuff. Legacy of Kane series. Forgot to do uh, the ad thing. Don't you think the question of The Last of Us 2 is more of what does the creator owe his audience, if anything? Again, not a Last of Us fan, but seems serves a larger point yeah i think you can make a great point that way like what does the i think when you have a sequel um it just makes business sense to to get people but i i don't know if there's even the same artists involved from before do you know what i mean oh, i got detected for just a second oh There we go. We're hidden now. Get that brandy. That's worth some money. And those potatoes. It's a crawl space door. And we'll go in and we'll see if there's anything else. I seem to remember some stuff in this house that was that was like pretty worth taking. Like a silver sword or something. Let's find out. Mm, silver battle axe. I don't think I think I can carry it off. So yeah, what does the person owe owe his audience? It's like I don't know. Um, I think more it's just if the story's not good. I heard him go, ah, which means he died. The mounted head has fallen on Baneland, killing him as expected. I must return to the sanctuary and speak with Vincente Valtieri to receive my reward. Go across to his bedroom. There's a Nern root. I don't know why I took this. I took his clothes. He's not going to need them where he's going. There we go. Yeah, I think it's more just if it's not a good story. You take characters that people liked and you do things with them that they don't like or you kill the characters. It's edgy in a way, but that doesn't mean that people are going to like it. And you can't get upset if somebody doesn't like it. And if your whole point is to make something that people don't like, you're going to get upset when people don't buy your garbage anymore. Like, I don't think the artist really owes the audience anything in particular. It's more, what are you selling them? And you're selling them Last of Us 2. You're not selling them Last of Us, the, like, inversion or the subversion of Last of Us. Otherwise, it, you'd call it something else. You wouldn't call it Last of Us 2. Do you know what I mean? I like how Gron is just standing there. I think you can go back in here later and actually loot his body for stuff. Get like the key and stuff and actually live in his house. Take over his house and just live in it if you want to. 
because it like becomes it becomes an unowned bed after you kill him which is really interesting how this so if you kill someone in this game their bed becomes unowned and you can just sleep in it <coughs> i always thought that was i thought that was pretty funny we're gonna go where are we going shaden hall I think with the internet and more consumer participation with media creators are rebelling against their consumers. A lot of resentment and nihilism going around in their circles. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. Oh, Tolkien believed mythological heroes like Odysseus were static and revealed facets of their character like peeling onion layers rather than changing. He based Aragorn on that approach. Yeah, and I could totally see that. Um, and I agree. You know, heroic fantasy doesn't really doesn't really take a boy and seek to make him a man it just it's the adventures of a man revealing like his inner character so the idea that you need character arcs that's just not it's not really based on past literature i think it's just we've had a lot of successful young adult stories and that's what young adult stories are about they're about that harry potter's about harry potter growing into somebody but uh that's not you again. Why, citizen, I don't have all day. Hurry it up. Sell some stuff. Some more gold here. You got yourself a deal, idiot. Now I can sell it for five times its worth. How I insult you. I can sell it for five times its worth. Um, yeah, if you've had a lot of successful young adult stuff, that's in that direction. So the tendency has been to want to make all things like other things that are successful, but that's not... Greetings, brother. If things go back... Okay. No, i got to talk to Vincent. You know, historically, that's not what what always sells. In fact, I'd say like, competent men sell more often than um, hero's journey stuff. You got to think competent men includes stuff like James Bond and Sherlock Holmes, which are very popular over the long run. Oh, here he is. Ooh, I got a I got a cool dagger. You have more than earned your reward and bonus. I present to you this dagger. It's an enchanted blade known as Suppathorn. Its prick is deadly, I assure you. Yes, you are quite an asset to this sanctuary. In fact, I believe you are ready for advancement. I don't have a stake in Last of Us 2, but they did the same thing with Star Wars, and I hated that. Adopting someone else's IP is a dangerous game. Yeah, continuing from any other author. I mean, the author is the only one that can do that, but if the author loves his creations, he probably doesn't do that. Can you spare one? Yeah. The corporate age of art, genuine and new content is hard to come by and it's easily devoured. Main thing is it gets passed over to people who care nothing for it, who just view it as an asset that they can use to make more money. Now he has an enchanted blade right there. I hope your contracts have been giving you much pleasure. Yeah, I think yeah, this guy gives you a quest to kill another Argonian. It just so happens I have another contract available. One that requires an expert in infiltration. I don't think it's just young adult fiction that inspired the all stories need character arcs idea. Most film critics seem steeped in the idea. Most ones now, but that wasn't the case 20 or 30 years ago. As always, you fail to disappoint me. Your target is a dark elf named Valen Dreth. Valen Dreth! Oh, I love this quest! He is tragically mistaken. A prisoner recently escaped from the prison using a set of secret tunnels connected to the Imperial City's sewer system. It's a perfect way inside. Just outside the Imperial prison is a grating that leads to the sewers. It has recently been tightly locked, but I will provide a key. Yeah, man, he's got some cheek bones. in his small cell. Besides, I think you know the way, hmm? <laughs> Valendreth has been imprisoned for many years. His tongue is sharp, but his body is limp and frail. He will prove an easy, pleasurable kill. 
you will receive a bonus if you fulfill the contract without killing any of the prison guards. Now go, and may the Night Mother go with you. I think you get a bow if you do it like the, the good way. All right. Next quest. I, I really like I thought it was really cool that they send you back in the prison to kill the guy who was taunting you at the beginning. <laughs> you mean Star Wars had character arcs? You know, Star Wars, of course, is going to have a big impact. Lots of things have character arcs, but I think that the huge breakout success of certain young adult franchises has really made people want to pay attention to that. Younger people, anyways. Where's the character growing? As though that's what really matters the most. So yeah, we can go in through the, the sewer and go kill Balin Dreth. That might be fun. But I think I need to repair some of my items because they're broken. Actually, I probably don't need to. I am going to go over here and... Is it Bruma? No, it's Coral. I'm going to go level up my blacksmithing pay for some more skill ups here for the sun owns me totally look at all that sun damage I'm taking good day knowledge is power I can show you some news good that you want to get better three knowledge is Four. I'm going to teach five. You. I can repair almost anything. Oh, <laughs> he repaired the hood for one gold. Okay, fifty-seven gold to repair that. Okay, that's cheap. You There's a lot of hack jobs out there. That's actually really true. Lots of people have degrees in English and have no idea how to write a story because they don't teach you that. They just don't teach it to you. You've got to wait 12 hours, 13 hours. We're going to hang out in your shop for 13 hours, okay? Well, the thing about deconstruction is that you can only do it once. The first person to do something that challenges your assumptions about the nature of art is the only person who can really do it. And then after that, you're just doing that again. You're just repeating, quote, the, the deconstruction because it's own thing. And that's why we have antiheroes. An antihero is like a deconstruction of a hero. Problem with that is that, you know, I've entered the sewers beneath the Imperial prison. I must now proceed through the sewers and into the prison itself and kill Valen Drath. Some rats over there. Look, I can see all the rats. I'm going to go this way. And uh, we can also do this. Seven. Bound bow. I don't have any arrows equipped. I equip some arrows. Go. See, that's great. Then you don't have to carry around a, a freaking bow. Oh, there's some fish down in there. Slaughterfish. All right, here we go. I have to wonder if I'm going the right way, actually. I assume I am. But we're, we, you go in a different way than you came out of, which is interesting. So you have to, it's different when you go back in because it's a different way. I'm 
creature's vision is so sweet. Zero magic. See everything that's possible. Although it probably looks kind of boring on your screen. I remember it's darker on my screen for gameplay reasons, I guess. But I think for playback reasons, that works a little bit better if it's brighter. Something has detected me. Is it the fish? The fish is coming for me. Um, and it gets a little boring to see things just like in black and white, but I think it, it works for RP reasons. Another door over here. Where am I going? I'm hearing the like battle music. Oh, it's a crab. It's a mud crab. I could go kill Umbra. That's another thing I could do. Killing Umbra is pretty, usually pretty cool. Killing Umbra is usually pretty cool. Can't tell if that animal's there or behind oh, it's behind the wall. I can't hit it. All good. It's all good. So in a novel series I will keep nameless, I see the author's political and social opinions shining through. I agree with them, but always feel like poor handling. Thoughts? If it's handled poor, then just make a note of it. Don't do that. I notice authors doing it a lot. I mean I was reading um I was reading an R.A. Salvatore novel, and, you know, his little humanist views on religion keeps popping up and confusing things, even though he's writing in, like, the D&D the &D universe. Uh, it's just kind of silly. Like, gods are just kind of representative of ideals and not real things. It's very silly, the way he talks about it, and he does use, like, Driz the word and is, like, a mouthpiece for that viewpoint. It's a little silly. I wouldn't do that. I don't like one size fits all standards either. And that's why I try to avoid telling people like, here's how you write a plot because that's not how you write a good plot. You know, you write a good plot by doing something original and interesting to people. You know, you gotta do something that's a little bit outside the box. You gotta break the rules a little bit. So I try not to tell people like, this is the way you must do it. Cause there's no way that you must do it. There's ways to do things. That's it. They have different effects. Yeah, you're totally going in a different way than you came out, which is great. So I love this. It, it's just like such a good RP feel to like be sneaking through this stuff. I don't remember ever having stuff that was quite this level in Skyrim. Um, there was some Thieves Guild stuff that was like that, where you had to sneak in to say like the the metery, sneak into the metery and burn the beehives. I thought that was a cool one. I think those are all closed. Yeah, you have to come over here and open one. I don't remember. There's this place is like a labyrinth. You can spend like a lot of time exploring the Imperial sewers and go all the way through them. There's several missions that take you back through them. And if you actually know them really well, you can use them to like move around the city. I always thought that would have been a really cool thing to do is to have to move around the city via the sewers instead of uh, the overground, like everyone's trying to kill you at some point. It would have been fun. There's a, a bunch of different things that you could do with this and, uh oh. Exactly what I'm saying. 
I don't have an invisibility spell. I should have gotten an invisibility spell before I went in here. Because you can just invisible past these guys really easily. Just got to listen to the banter for a while. Close the door so they don't accidentally see me here. And now we can see him walk off. That's really useful. You can actually get all this with a helmet called Fin Gleam. I think I've shown where to get it. And there's some good little there's some good little quests in the Skyrim. Thieves Guild. This one, I, I like the Thieves Guild much better in uh, Oblivion, personally. It's, I don't know, it's less, uh, you know, each uh, each quest line has its own kind of, uh, I don't know, alignment, I guess I would say. Um, you know, this one's really, like, evil. This is like lawful evil, or chaotic evil, even. Whereas the Thieves Guild isn't isn't that evil you know they're more uh, they're more I don't know kind of neutral they're like thieves with a heart of gold they're not like bad bad guys they're just kind of bad you know they steal stuff they care for the the urchins they're more like you know chaotic neutral or something rather than say full on just evil evil chaotic evil or even lawful evil oh. so we came through that door before okay okay he's moving definitely i could say i think this this part's a little easier as a vampire cuz you can see the guys moving off so somehow i got to sneak past him and and see where he's going. Okay, he's backs to me. Sneak. Sneak, 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 sneak. Woo! All right. Let's see. I'm it's Luke Skywalker from the, the Jedi novel and Jedi Knight games. Yeah, I, I we should play some Jedi Knight. It's, it's a great game. I think it still holds up. Yeah. Yeah, the boy to a man thing. I mean, it's just one way of doing a story. You don't have to do it that way. There's a bunch of different ways to do any given story. Okay. Should all look familiar, yeah. I think you can... If you have high acrobatic skill, you can jump up into some of these, like, crannies. See, there's a door up there. Um, but here we go. Going into more of these. Oh, see, they, they blocked up this, they blocked up the tunnel, so you have to go back through a different way. I can appreciate that. Through this way. Oh, there's there's the the bodies. Man, it's so so sweet to do this as a vampire. Oh, the okay, the guards talking to him. Years in this 
Eleven years. Where is my new blade? Sufferthorn. This is way less damage though. I think the damage health though, I think that might be good to use. Where will you go, huh? What will you do? We can't survive out there trapped. You're an animal. Belong in that cage. I'll remember that when I'm lying on the beaches of Somerset Isle with your wife, you imperial pig. Right. And you'll be rich too. Oh, and you'll become a king. And you know what I think, Dread? I think you You can talk to him before you kill him, too. It's pretty... Like, it's you! It's that bread loaf was still there. Let's go ahead and take that. Look at this jingling. Just jingle jangle. Jingle jangle. Jingle jangle. Jingle jangle. Now, you can actually escape from this by just walking out of the prison. So maybe we'll try that. See if that just like walk out nonchalantly, like later guys. They're like, oh, what is he doing here? I got my cell door isn't locked. There he is. You, you, you're the one. The, the Daily Emperor was killed. They went through your cell. You lucky bastard. But you came back? Come on, you've got to help me. Let old Valen out of this cell. You've got your freedom, now give me mine. What do you say, huh? Come on, friend. The Night Mother says goodbye. No, no, gods, gods, help. Somebody help! Assassin! Shit. Balin is dead and no guards have been killed. I must return to the sanctuary and speak with Vincent, Vincente Valtieri to receive my reward as well as a bonus. Wow, that, that Suffer Thorn is quite deadly. Yeah, I think you can, you can always explore around in here a little bit. Dark. Deep dark dungeon. Oh, and his cell key's right down here. Oh my gosh, you can just pick up the key. Alright. Now I'm gonna quick save to see if this destroys everything. Uh, and then I'll tell you what I would do with Star Wars. I would probably do what they're actually doing, which is I'd expand out of the normal normal timeline that we're used to. Like, well, I should just like walk out of prison. Hi. Is everything all right? You look a bit ill. You look a bit ill. Hail, citizen. I speak for you. <laughs> or at least I did. Yeah, here we are. Evidence. Imperial City Prison District. Oh, you know what? Here, let me see if this if this actually works here. Oh, it doesn't open with the key. I think you can actually... Yeah, there's like a little courtyard you can go into out there if you pick that lock. I don't know if I want to do it because it's a lot of effort. Just to look at it. Just, we can do it. Let me just like look at it. Fortunately, the key doesn't open it. You know? Go get up to level 10 and get... Uh, get Nocturnal's key there. The unbreakable lockpick. There we go. 
Yeah, there's a little courtyard in the prison. And you can just walk around in here. There's nothing really to look at. There's like this tent and there's a, there's a beggar here, I guess. For some reason. We'll feed him. So hopefully I'm not over encumbered. Talk. Jibana. Do you have business with me? All these guild members have sworn. All right. Shadow hiding. Yeah, there's just like a little courtyard here. There's nothing really here, but it's just kind of neat. You can just open it up and see. What's up? Yeah, what I would do with Star Wars is probably just expand into other times, like Old Republic stuff, um, where you're just really not burdened with uh, with having to deal with these established characters and um, handle them in all the correct ways, and you know just deal with all of the the BS that has happened with uh, with the Ryan Johnson stuff and the the Kathleen Kennedy stuff. I think there's another, is this the barracks? I don't remember. Anyway, we could just walk out of the prison now. Super easy. You know? Kind of cool how that works. And we just travel back to see Vincent. Yeah. So I think they're doing that. They, they have this thing like High Republic. I don't know if the stories are going to be any good, but that's really what you ought to be doing. Is just going to a different timeline where you have a lot of the same common stuff with the setting, but you're not having to worry about, you know, you can only screw it up so much that way. It's like, how do I keep writing movies now that Han Solo is dead? It's like, could you, you wipe those clean? It's like, you could do that, I think. You could say, none of those count, and we're doing, we're remaking the new trilogy because it was so bad. But I think it's probably better for business to just go forward and. We're going to do Old Republic stuff or something in the future, maybe. Either one. Of course. What is it? Everyone's talking about the face. Get away from me. Get away from me. There he is. So, the scales of pitiless justice. Eliminated Vail and Breath and killed not one guard. Most excellent. In addition to your standard reward, I present to you this bonus. Behold, the scales of pitiless justice. While carried, the scales will magically enhance your strength, intelligence, and agility, but diminish your personality. A powerful tool indeed. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, deeper concepts. I mean, yeah, it just depends what you want to do. I mean, Lucas explored deeper concepts with, with the prequels, and people didn't like it. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I probably would. You know, is the is the Republic a just state? Uh, Republic corruption is something George Lucas explored, and I think that that's valuable. That's probably where I would have taken the sequel trilogy is the difficulties of dealing with corruption and backbiting when they established the New Republic. That kind of stuff I think would have been a lot more interesting. Um, and just kind of chaos, more factions to deal with. Are you familiar with the... Leslie Headland situation. She's an SJW who used to be Weinstein's personal assistant. Kathleen Kennedy has hired her to run a female-focused Star Wars series. I haven't. I don't keep up with Star Wars, guys. I, I don't pay attention to Star Wars anymore, and you guys probably shouldn't either. There's just not really... I mean, there's not really a lot there. Oh, I forgot to get another mission. There's just nothing there. Like, There's no reason to keep giving money to people who hate you. Just don't worry about Star Wars. Just give them no attention or time. Find something else that's fun. You know, I might do like one more Star Wars video because I haven't done Return of the Jedi. So I'll probably do Return of the Jedi and that'll, that'll probably be it. I don't really want to talk too much about Star Wars. I talked about the, a, a book cover because it was a... All, the, all of the fandom ministers like, this is a terrible book cover. I'm like, actually, it's a great book cover. Let me tell you why. Being a book cover designer. You must go to the city of Coral and break into the house of Francois Mortier. Inside you will find Mortier waiting for you. Do not kill him. You see, 
Francois Mortier is a marked man. He owes a considerable sum to the wrong kind of people, so they have sent an enforcer to kill him. Here, you will use this specially poisoned knife to stage Mortier's death in the enforcer's presence. Mortier himself will provide more details. This is an unusual contract. Yeah, I'm not going to... I really don't want to talk too much about Star Wars because it's just... It's just... It's boring. You know, we, there's it's never going to be good again because it's controlled by people who hate you and hate Star Wars. Right? They have the legal control over it and everybody pretends like that matters. The knife I gave you, the knife I gave you has been coated with a red... The blade has been coated with a rare poison called Langerwein. One drop in a normal human bloodstream will... I have provided you with a vial of antidote, which will be used to revive Francois Mortier after you... Yeah, now, he, when he revives, all the ghosts attack him. You have to, like, fight off the ghosts, which is pretty fun. The blade for this one contract. After Mortier is sliced, the knife will be useless. Um... What are your thoughts on Joseph Campbell's ideas about the hero's journey? Do you think that Campbell was too dogmatic and or too dependent on Young's ideas? I don't know. Um, I think that's just a way of looking at things. And when you only get dogmatic when you start trying to look at it as a formula that you have to apply. Uh, and I think anytime you're trying to start with a theory and see how much you can apply to it, you're going to be you're going to be doing what's called prescriptive analysis. Prescriptive analysis is when you have an idea of what something ought to be and you contextualize everything that you look at to fit what you think it ought to be. And I think that's, honestly, I think that's what a lot of Joseph Campbell does. It's still useful for, you know, generalizing things. But if you come at it with like every story is a hero's journey, you're going to recontextualize every plot point to try to fit into your preconceived idea of how it works. And it may not actually be that way. It's called prescriptive analysis. Descriptive analysis isn't analysis at all. That's just you're saying this happens, then this happens. Prescriptive analysis is saying this. I want this to represent a certain thing. Therefore, I will ignore some things and kind of focus more deeply on other things in order to make my point, in order to, to use this evidence to make my point. It's kind of like twisting evidence, recontextualizing evidence to make it fit your, your preconceived ideas. The Dark Brotherhood is not in the business of staging death no matter how much gold is offered. Sithis demands blood, and blood must be paid. In order to accept the contract, we demanded a life. Why is everyone so goofy looking? It was because it was made in 2000, like 4, 2005. Then came out in 2006. So uh, 1080p rendering didn't even exist when they were making this game. It's like one of the very first HD games ever made. And, uh, you know, you were still working on the technology. Like, they're they're way better than Morrowind faces. But, you know, it's a product of early, quote, next gen, early Xbox 360. And things got better as they went. People forget both Oblivion and um, Skyrim were both the same generation of consoles. And so... Uh, it's really surprising how, how well they did with it. All right. So I'm going to save. I'm going to call it here for the day because that's a two-hour stream. I appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out and watching with me. Yeah, they still use the engine. Um, I'm not going to say that that's good or bad. But the engine is great for doing what Oblivion does. Um, so anyway, I appreciate you guys coming out and watching. And I hope that you will join me next time. And uh, I'll see you guys later. The newest book is called Keys to Prolific Creativity. It's right here. And uh, you can pick that up for $2.99 for the ebook. Work on your creative process and get all that squared away. And, uh, you know, just help you improve what you're doing. So thanks so much. And I'll see you guys um, next time. And by the way, the, the bugs in Bethesda are not bad. The bugs happen because uh, you have a wide open game and it's the good over the perfect. I'll do maybe do some more content towards that uh, later. So thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time.